Oxygen is a gas which is used by biological life to create energy. It is used mostly because of its reactivity. I will synthesize it to demonstrate how oxygen can be found in many useful compounds. In industry, it is extracted from air. I will be doing it in two ways. The first way to produce oxygen requires potassium permanganate, hydrogen peroxide, and acetic acid, commonly known as vinegar. I recommend non-colored and 5% acidity. The second technique only requires baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. In these two reactions, the hydrogen peroxide is the form of the oxygen. To start the experiment, you will add around 1.5 teaspoons of potassium permanganate to an Erlenmeyer's flask. You should add 10 milliliters of vinegar. I didn't film the addition, but you can see the brilliant purple color. Now, the potassium permanganate isn't too soluble in water, so I had to mix vigorously. Now, the apparatus I show is a way to capture gases. I also made a makeshift addition funnel with a syringe. I had some trouble when I was trying to start the reaction, but I got it working in the end. I actually had two test tubes, but it's way too overkill. You should only use one test tube. There's a lot of bubbling in the beginning, but it just stops. The amount of material is important, and I think I didn't add enough vinegar. I, also, I only got about half a test tube worth of oxygen, and then that's like 40% oxygen, which is important for later tests. I tried to add more hydrogen peroxide, but that was not a limiting reagent, so it did not affect the yield. I also tried to take dismantle the setup and shake the Erlenmeyer flask to make it react a lot more, but in the end, that didn't really change anything. So I dismantled the whole setup, and I'm showing you guys the test tube with the oxygen. I don't think I did a good enough job of getting rid of the water, so a lot of it's still there, and that's going to be important for the later test. Now, to deal with the waste, I added one teaspoon of sodium carbonate. When I mix the substance, you can actually hear some bubbling and fizzing as it reacts. Now we are left with a dark brown solution that you can just dispose of. For the second technique, I added 5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide to the test tube. Then I added 1 fourth a teaspoon of sodium carbonate to the so hydrogen peroxide and mixed. Now I assembled this apparatus and heated up the mi mixture. I personally used a Bunsen burner, but you can use a heating mat until if necessary. Unlike the previous reaction, this produces tons more oxygen and I could have filled the second test tube. That would have been better because usually the first test tube is just air. Then when I finished, I dropped it and then quickly refi refilled it. I started by testing the first batch and I show it in slow motion to capture the event. It seems like I hit the wall of the test tube and it was covered in water so it put out the fire. The second one, I just don't think I had enough oxygen and I did not get the proper results. Now, we did not produce pure oxygen and I think this was because of the capture system. This isn't bad though because science is all about figuring something out and we should strive to eliminate other factors. Otherwise, we would just get up the same results every single time.
Tak, 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 basa, nie wiem, skąd. 